3D printing is opening up new markets at a rapid pace, including healthcare, in and, and which we're actually using our own printer right now to save our company mascot and my best friend's life. Here at the EP, I'm speaking about 3D printing from waste, using myself and our company. At Re3D, we are decimating cost and scale barriers to 3D printing. We do that to try and help anyone, anywhere, anytime problem solve by making some of the world's largest affordable industrial 3D printers. We've been able to modify our 3D printers to directly print from shredded plastic waste. What we've learned along the way in working with consumer waste and because of all the complexities that we've highlighted is maybe a better source of printing is manufacturing waste. It's clean, it's typed, it might be virgin, and it can offer groups a double or triple value add. So for example, in Australia, where there's a ban on pallets, you have the opportunity to take your own manufacturing waste to make something that you need internally. Those are opportunities that need to happen with rigor to, I think, to really get exponential thinkers like yourselves out there and figuring out you know, where this has merit. Sometimes I get, I get criticism uh, for people in the sustainability conversations because as we think about circular waste economies, it's not waste, it's a resource. So this water bottle could be a resource. Right now it's costing money to dispose of it, it may take forever to degrade, but waste is such a valuable resource and right now it's sitting and taking up space and costing communities money and it could be leveraged to create new jobs and more resilient circular economies. So Major Patty is a retired military working dog that I had the honor of adopting post his transition from Afghanistan. He quickly became our company mascot. He's an English Springer Spaniel with a lot of energy and loves our team. Major Patty served in Afghanistan for several years. He protected the embassy, he looked for bombs, and he's very driven by play and loyalty and people, so he was really good at what he did. Um, so Patty is truly my wingman. Unfortunately, a couple of months ago, we noticed he was getting some skin lesions. Um, at first they thought maybe it was a rash that had developed years later from his time in the desert. Um, and unfortunately, what we realized um, just a couple months ago is it was stage five doggy cancer. And it was looking like it may have been his time to go to doggy heaven. Fortunately for us, a clinician at Texas A&M University, Dr. Michael DeVoe, has started to explore using our own 3D printer to create a way to treat the same type of cancer. They take a scan of the dog. They use that to make the model of the print that will go around their body and to refine the protocol and the laser. And then he will start radiation the same week. It's been a lot of tears in the company. Like um, a couple months ago, I thought I was being a big girl about the whole situation and trying to be responsible because Patty has so many friends. And then I had to buy Patty dog food and I wasn't sure what size dog food bag to buy because I thought I was going to put him down the following week. And so I'm there like at the store realizing I'm not going to get the 20 pound and I'm going to have to get the five pound with Patty because he goes with me everywhere. And I'm like looking at him feeling horrible. And I just like start bawling <laughs> in the pet store. And um, since then, in the last two months, he's gone through a whole 20 pound bag on top of that. And this week I bought another 20 pound bag because they're like, this dog's, we're, we're, we're feeling pretty good. You know, we'll see how long it extends his doggy life. But, but right now um, it's looking promising. I don't know if what Dr. DeVoe is doing will become the protocol going forward, but the fact that he looked at the machine that we thought of as a platform to make composting toilets in Rwanda and saw a way to treat cancer directly is just, it's mind blowing. I would like to see leaders today be empowered to take risks. Everything's been disrupted as there aren't precedents. And as we have to problem solve and come together as a community to, to redefine our, our world, 